In today's video, I'll be playing 1943, which was a arcade game released by Capcom back in 1987, and it was a sequel to uh, 1942, which was released in, I think, 1984 or 1985, so let's start. So the objective of this game is just, just take out the bosses, which are major enemy ships. Like the historical Japanese uh, capital ships of World War II. Like the Yamato um, battleship. Um, others, Megami, heavy cruiser, what have you. And this was a classic isometric game. I think this was a 16-bit game released in 1987. Very popular arcade cabinet. Uh, I used to play games like this. I used to play this game a lot back in the arcades. Really enjoyed Capcom arcade games. Like um, 1942, 1941, and others. Uh, Trojan. Area 88. Carrier Air Wing, Punisher, so many. They made a lot of arcade titles. But back in the day, um, I guess if you're a Gen Xer, there was something called Saturday Morning Cartoons. So after kids like me watch Saturday Morning Cartoons, we go to the arcades on the weekends as well and play, um, take about five dollars or something to the arcades and play some arcade games like this. And, uh, when I was growing up, there was two arcades in the mall that I, that was near my area. First one was, um, I think there was one called Space Station, which was an arcade chain or something. There's another smaller one. The smaller one went out of business. In 1987 or something. I just went to the space station a lot. There were all types. There were a lot of arcades just about everywhere. There were arcades in pizza parlors. There were arcades in restaurants. There were arcades in coin operated laundries. And just. Bull halls and a lot of other places. Liquor stores, convenience stores, 7 Elevens, you name it. And today, you hardly see any arcades anywhere. So, for this game, you could choose uh, between three weapons. First is a shotgun, second is a machine gun, which I'm using right now. Third is um, two way, and the fourth is a bumpers like a uh, cannon round. Shotgun's good for blocking shots from enemies. The weapon that I like is a machine gun because it's concentrated rapid fire. As you can see in the side panel of this um, arcade cabinet, uh, it shows you how to play the game, and that was uh, how arcade cabinets were back in the day. They would give you give you the instructions right there. Thank you. 
This game wasn't terribly difficult. It was playable. It wasn't that hard compared to other type of arcade cabinets at the time and Capcom didn't make impossibly difficult arcade games. And for arcade games, the game makers had to get the money from the user as they played the game. Which was quite the contrary for um, software that you bought, like if you bought the ported version of 1943 for the NES, Commodore 64, Commodore Amiga, or other platforms, you would just pay the upfront cost when you bought the software. So they didn't have to make the games very hard, but for the arcade, the faster the player dies, the more money the arcade cabinet makes. So that's how it was set up back then. So arcade games were definitely more difficult than the home versions. But the allure of the arcade games was that the graphics were so much better. The home versions didn't look as good. That is until 16-bit computers and uh, video game consoles became popular. Starting from the late 1980s and 1990s, with 16-bit systems, it was kind of like almost approaching arcade level quality. But the 8-bit defi system definitely couldn't cut it. And in some cases, um, video game consoles like uh, the Sega Genesis and um, Sharp 6800 computers use the same um, CPUs as arcade versions. It used the Motorola 6800, and a lot of arcade boards use that CPU as well. But I have to say, even in the 16-bit era, the arcade games were still better in terms of like what you saw on the screen. Well, today it's we don't see a lot of arcades because uh, obviously everything your video game console or computer can do can be done in the arcade, but in a country like Japan, um, arcade games still do exist, but just not so much in the United States. Back in time, back in the 1980s and 1990s, 1970s, it was a different story. Arcades were very popular. So another reason why people went to the arcades was because uh, people could play against each other or play with each other. You know, this was a two-player game. You could play with other people. And when fighting games started coming out in the early 1990s, like Street Fighter 2, um, people would go to the arcades to play against other people. Who the better player was. Laser. This game had lasers. <laughs> there were no lasers back in 1943. Lasers were invented in the 1960s. I don't know how I got that. I enjoyed all the Capcom games. I liked Area 88. I used to play that often in 19. I think it was released in 1988 or something. Not sure. 88 or 89. 
That was one of the games that I played a lot of. And Operation Wolf also. A mechanized attack. So you had a lot of companies that produced games for arcades back in the 1980s and 1990s. Like SNK, um, Konami, Taito, Capcom. Did I mention Konami? Or other less known ones like Sait, Seda, Seda. Galico, Namco, Bailey, Midway USA, and all these other companies. But Capcom was one of, one of the best um, arcade game um, producers. And the company still exists today. Capcom still exists. They did very well on platforms like um, the MSX computer, um, Nintendo Entertainment System. Since Nintendo NES was a very popular platform, they sold a lot of games and made a lot of money. Also in the arcades as well, you also had Sega, which was also a big manufacturer of arcade games. still good at this game even after all these years You also had companies like IDRAM or something, that was another company that produced games, arcade games. But as for isometric games like this, um, they became less and less popular back in the 1980s, 1990s, mid 1990s. But you had some companies producing games like this, like 19 uh, Strikers 1945. It really wasn't that successful because uh, people were bored of these type of games by then. They wanted to play 3D games with polygonal graphics in the mid 1990s, not titles like this. But this is a classic title, so I still enjoy it even to this day. Pretty much it. So, in the 1980s or 1990s arcade, you had a you had a machine that dispensed quarters. Where in, if you went to places like Chuck E. Cheese's and stuff like that, uh, you would put in your money paper money and they would dispense uh, tokens in places like Chuck E. Cheese's. If you went to an arcade it would just dispense quarters and you would use that to play your arcade games. It would only take um, coins, quarters basically, it wouldn't take anything else. It wouldn't take dimes, nickels, or pennies.
Yeah, I think that's it. So anyways, um, if you have any thoughts, you can leave them in the comment section below. And uh, thanks for watching.